Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Uh, we are here for a, another episode of the Master Spotlight. Uh, today I'm joined with uh, Paula from IESC uh, Business School, University of Navarra, um, and she is one of the directors of admission, and uh, she's going to walk us through the presentation here for IESC, and then uh, I will come back on, we'll run through some Q&As. So make sure you get your questions in the comments. Um, we're excited to answer them, but without further ado, Paula, I'll go ahead and hand it off to you. Thank you, Brandon. And thanks everyone for being here with us uh, today. It's a pleasure to participate in another GMAT Club uh, Spotlight, now with our master's candidate. Um, as Brandon already introduced, I'm the head of admissions for uh, the master management and the full-time MBA at ESA. I'm also a graduate from the school, so I did my MBA with ESA uh, from 2014 to 16. And I've been working in the admissions team since then, uh, so it's been almost five years. I was previously responsible for the Latin American market and based in our Sao Paulo campus. I'm originally from Brazil, so being based in Sao Paulo uh, was not very exotic, although I'm not originally from Sao Paulo, I'm from another city. And before the, doing my MBA with ESA, I was, um, I'm an industrial engineering uh, engineer by training. And I was working as a management consultant in local firms in Brazil with a short um, uh, period as a project manager right coming <clears throat> to ESA. So um, I want to give an overview of what ESA is, what the mastery management is, uh, talk about the Career Development Center and the support that we give uh, to our students and um, share some tips uh, on the application process, uh, the GMAT or the GRE, and then we'll have some Q&A um, at the end, and I'll try to be as short and assertive as I can, but um, as a Brazilian, I really like to talk, so I hope I'm not too redundant for you. But I always like to um, uh, start any presentation about the essay talking about our mission. Because our mission is the sole reason for our existence, right? So we were founded because um, some people thought that if we had a business school that would form leaders, that would uh, populate the companies that uh, run the world, and if these leaders aspired to have a positive, deep and lasting impact on everyone around them, then maybe we could have a better world, right? So this is our mission. This is what we're trying to accomplish. Um, this is the mindset that we're trying to instill in our students. And we have some underlying values that support that mission and these values being some of them, uh, professionalism, integrity, and spirit of service. So with, no matter the person that you talk um, with at ESA, you will see that there is a um, very strong feeling of belonging, of collaboration, of um, uh, this willingness to help and willingness to share. We use, I'm gonna talk about this, but we use the case methodology in at the school. Uh, so it's very important that we have students that are willing to share what they bring, right? Because otherwise the diversity that um, we fight to bring to class wouldn't be that worth if people were not willing to share what they bring. And then what is yes in just a few words for those that don't know? Um, all our programs and all we're trying to pass to our students is uh, focus on ethics, human values, and uh, leadership cap capabilities. We, wa we are one of the business schools uh, with the longest history in Europe. So we were founded in 58 um, in Barcelona. And uh, we were founded after the, um, so our mother university is the University of Navarra. And back in the 50s, the dean of the University of Navarra went to Harvard, did an immersion there, and brought back the same uh, method and the same structure for the full-time MBA. So Harvard's and um, ESA's uh, programs for the MBA specifically, they are very similar in terms of uh, length of the program, how the first year and the second year is split, the summer internship in the middle, and the case methodology. 
Um, we have a um, strong partnership and we're always um, uh, flexible, acknowledging every individual is unique and the world is changing. So I think that this is very important, how ESA doesn't uh, treat the students as just another one, but uh, we're very unique. There's, it's what we call the humanistic approach to business. And we have five campuses around the world. So I'm now connecting from Barcelona. We have the Madrid campus that is the second biggest uh, campus, then Munich, New York, and Sao Paulo. And other than those, we have 16 associated schools that are spread around the world, especially in emerging markets. And the reason for these associations is precisely to increase the reach of um, our mission. And we are consistently top ranked. We had um, very good, good news today, actually, um, on the full-time MBA, that uh, we were ranked number four uh, in the world, number three in Europe. We do have some schools that are missing from the Financial Times uh, this year, but even so, we think it's, um, it's an excellent position to be in. And for executive education, we were ranked number one for the past six years from the, in the Financial Times. Um, the mastering management is specifically is not, has not been ranked yet because it's a recent program. Uh, so the first class started in 2019 and graduated in July 2020. And we need three years to be ranked. So uh, hold tight because in a couple of years we'll be ranked and I'm sure we're going to be among the top. And just to give you an idea on um, the different uh, programs that we offer, we have programs for each uh, moment of a person's career. The mastery management is actually the youngest uh, from our students and we have programs up to uh, C levels. And <clears throat> in the right side, you have the degree program. So the, the, the mastery management, the uh, full-time MBA, the executive MBA, the global MBA, um, executive MBA, and the PhD, and then the um, black balls are the executive education programs where we've been uh, ranked number one for the past six years. And if you gather all the alumni that we have uh, from all the programs, we have uh, more than 50,000 spread around the world. And this is a very powerful um, asset that you get uh, from doing your master's at ESA. And the four pillars that uh, we use at ESA that will actually uh, mark your career are entrepreneurial spirit. And it's not necessarily because we feel that everybody that comes to ESA needs to be an entrepreneur or needs to found their own company. But we believe that there are certain skills and um, uh, traits that it's interesting for our students to develop so they can be even more successful in their careers. We are expecting our students to have a positive impact um, in the world and leave this meaningful footprint. And I feel that this is um, especially relevant for, the, uh, for your generation, where we feel more and more that um, the young generations, and I'm going to include myself here because I still consider myself young, um, we don't want our careers to just be um way to get money just for ourselves right we want <clears throat> we want to have an impact we want to dedicate our times into creating in creating value for society and so on and this is really one of our pillars uh, that we have at ESA and um we make sure to instill that mindset uh, in our students through our program a global mindset, and I think that um, it's not only by having multiple people, uh, people coming from multiple um, countries in class, it's also about um, the different backgrounds that they bring, the case methods that enables this uh, constant exchange um, of backgrounds, because it's one thing for you to be in a class uh, listening to one professor, even if you're surrounded by very different people and very interesting people, if you're just listening to someone speak, it's not that interesting, right? But if you are sharing a room and the class is participative and you're listening to everyone speak, 
you really build that global mindset, right? You really start understanding that the way things are done in China are very different than the way they are done in Saudi Arabia and then the US and uh, Latin America and so on. Um, so you really do become a global citizen, right? Because you are exposed so frequently and so consistently um, to other ways of tackling problems, uh, relating, uh, communicating, that you understand that your reality is just another one um, among many. <clears throat> and the general management uh, is our fourth pillar. And because we do believe in this holistic approach to business, even if you are looking into a more uh, specialized career, we feel it's important that even from the beginning of your career to understand what everybody is saying, right? Uh, so you understand the um, decisions that upper management um, does, um, the, different, <clears throat> the different paths that the company is going, uh, your competitors. It's, it's really important for you, even if you are a finance person, to understand about marketing, about strategy, about operations, so you can contribute and so you can make better decisions even for your department, right? And I think that here in the general management um, part, I think it's especially interesting um, for the ones that are looking for a master, because I know that um, a lot of the um, um, doubts are, should I go for a specialized master or should I go for a, a master in management or international business. And I feel that the advantage of going for something more generalist um, in the beginning of your career is that you don't have to commit uh, your career to the masters that you're doing, right? At the end, you can go for a master in management and still have a, an offer for, for financial services or consulting or um, consumer goods or tech or any other industry. Um, and you still have all the business training and if you need something a bit more technical, you can learn on the job, right? So I feel that this is interesting uh, not to commit before being exposed to a larger um, set of opportunities and options. And then in the center of everything, we have people. Um, and this is... It, this is really just not a pitch. I've been here at the SA for the past seven years and I can vouch um, that people is really in the center of everything that we do. And this is what we want our students to practice once they go back to the job market, right? That um, uh, the people that we have in the organizations, in society, they should be the ones uh, being prioritized and not just uh, profits and, share, and shareholders and stakeholders. And then um, some details on the mastering management uh, itself. It's, um, it's, uh, the, the program is based and delivered in Madrid. It's all in English, so you don't have to worry. We do have uh, Spanish classes in case you want to feel a bit more comfortable uh, walking around the beautiful Madrid and feeling a bit more comfortable asking or cafe con leche in, in the cafeteria or in the restaurants that you go. Uh, but the full program is in English. It lasts 11 months and the average age of our students is 23. It's up to two years of work experience. Um, so as I was saying in the beginning, this is a program that is really thought for the ones that are just coming out from university or have just started at uh, professional careers, right? We use the case methods uh, in all the classes that we can. And this is the, the curriculum, the, the schedule. Um, throughout, uh, in these 11 months, you're going to have five terms. Each of the terms, uh, you're going to have the mandatory courses. Only in the end, where here, where you say you see tracks, is where you can choose some um, tracks like finance or data analytics, sales and marketing, and there's another one that I'm not uh, remembering now. Uh, and then you do some electives on the um, concentration that you've uh, chosen to do. This is subjected to availability, so we need for us to deliver classes, we need a minimum amount of people interested in the, in the electives. 
So if you choose a concentration that is not um, uh, chosen by enough other, other classmates, then unfortunately you will have to do something else. Um, and something that I wanted to highlight here is that uh, throughout the five terms and uh, the whole program, you will be split into teams. And the reason for this team is for, for it to be your work unit where you're going to discuss the cases that you have uh, in the day to do your final project. Um, so a lot of these reports are going to be done in groups. Um, the special series uh, program, I think it depends on the professor. This is just hot topics and uh, trendy uh, topics that we want our students to develop uh, a bit more and then you deliver the, the students uh, delivering the format that the professor asks. I've heard of videos, I've, I've heard of written reports, uh, I've heard about a, a participation a presentation in class, so it depends on what the professor feels like doing. And we invite uh, speakers, global leaders, to come and lecture our students. Uh, so you have an even uh, more exposure to what is actually happening in the job market. Um, so the, the case method, as I said, it was uh, brought uh, from Harvard uh, back in the 50s. And the reason why we use the case method in the, um, uh, in the program and all our programs is because Business is not an exact, exact science, right? It's not a hard science. There's no one correct answer to um, one specific situation. Um, so we feel that it's a good, uh, it's a good uh, topic to discuss, right? And uh, what we are trying to develop in our students is precisely the ability to look at a problem understand the um, variables that uh, are influencing that problem, choosing the information that you're gonna, uh, <clears throat> that you're gonna use in order for you to make your decision. So at the end, a uh, case is a decision-making exercise. And I can think of something more interesting, useful and precious to develop in the very beginning of your career than decision making. Yeah. Um, so in our MIM, you're going to have, I think it's 200 or 300 cases. It's a very academically intense program. But it means that for 200 times, you had to look at a problem and make a decision. Um, so you make this decision on your own. So when I was doing my MBA, I would look at a problem. It was me with my Brazilian. Uh, mindset, uh, consultant experience, industrial engineer, and, and I would look at a problem and I would come up with a solution, right? Then I would go into my team meeting. So in the MBA, we also have teams that are assigned to us. And the reason why it's assigned and we don't get to choose is precisely to guarantee diversity inside the team. <clears throat> so we take into consideration nationality, backgrounds, undergrads, um, so we can have the most diversity uh, inside the team and the teams can be balanced equally strong among themselves because there's some sort of uh, competition among the teams. So then I would go into this, um, uh, into this team meeting, discuss the three cases of the day with all the other people from my team and they were uh, from Chile, Poland, uh, China, India, US, and different backgrounds, right? People from coming from finance, uh, healthcare, uh, banking, <clears throat> consulting. And then from there, the, the discussion would be much more interesting. And then we go to the classroom in a classroom uh, very similar to this one that you're looking at, that you're seeing in the picture uh, and discuss with the rest of the class, right? Uh, and this is where you really you are really exposed to real life uh, business problems from a, a variety of sectors. And this is why I also think that the, the general management aspect uh, of um, a master in management can be interesting because you see 
all the departments of a company and companies from different industries, right? Um, so you really develop expertise in uh, different sectors. It's a very practical way of learning, and I know that most uh, people come from um, formal uh, training that can be very theoretical, so it's nice to be able to, uh, to discuss and exchange ideas. And <clears throat> the professors act in a way that they are much more like a maestro and a guide in the discussion than the sole deliver, um, delivery person of the content and, and the knowledge, right? So um, they present uh, frameworks, um, sometimes in the middle of the discussion, sometimes before, sometimes after. But every time that we can have a case discussion, we will have a case discussion. And the professors play not only an important and interesting um, role inside the classroom, but they also work as mentors uh, outside of the classroom. And not because they have to, we do have a mentorship uh, program, so all the teams have one assigned mentor to them. But if you want to extrapolate and you have another professor that you feel more comfortable and closer, you can go to that professor and you see that um, they will be available. This is how a typical day uh, in the mastery management uh, look like. As you can see, the um, uh, day is very busy. It's very, very packed. Yes, in terms of academic experience, it's a very demanding school. So if you are looking uh, for something a bit more chill, a bit more relaxed, you don't want to study a lot, there are probably other um, universities that are more suitable for you because the academic experience at ESA can be very, uh, very tough. And then we have the Madrid campus. Uh, we're working on a virtual campus tour so we can uh, provide you with a better understanding of our beautiful campus. It's uh, surrounded by a forest. Um, it's only 20 minutes downtown. Usually that's where pe people live in Moncloa, that is a more central part of Madrid. And then we have a shuttle, a bus that can, that uh, goes around that area and uh, drive people to, to campus. So I just wanted to bring uh, quickly some um, uh, measures that we've been um, having on campus so that we are able to keep the in-person classes. So you have to, uh, there are a lot of protocols, your temperature needs to be checked, uh, you need a test to enter campus, the classroom, the classes are split in, in, in less, um, in, uh, uh, with less people inside, so it used to be 70 people in the class, now it's 50, you have different places to eat in the cafeteria, and uh, we've been very successful. So we know that the career, that career is one of the biggest drivers for someone to do a master in management, and I actually think that this is a very good reason uh, for it, especially because well, a lot of people do MBAs like I did, because we started in a career and we don't want that career anymore, and I want to switch. With a master in management, you have the opportunity to do that reflection before committing to a career and then put your boat in the right river. And our Career Development Center supports our students uh, with business development. That, is, uh, that means um, getting in touch with companies for them to come to campus, um, send us job opportunities and uh, network with our students. We have the career management uh, part that is the, the more soul searching, uh, self reflection uh, part of the journey. Also, how to do a good cover letter, a good CV, a good um, uh, interview, and the professional clubs that also expose a lot of students uh, to potential employers. This is our beautiful team. Um, they are, this is how they are organized. We are usually organized by um, industries. So depending if you have a specific uh, focal point, the, um, you have the industry specific uh, directors and the regional director as well. But this is gonna be your guy. So Carlos Amela, he's also from my class, so he's MBA 2016. And well, he's basically the student's best friends. <laughs> Or, or worst nightmare as well, because he can um, uh, chase you if you're not being dedicated and committed enough uh, to your job search process. Um, so career, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna personalize here. 
Uh, Carlos's job is um, understand what is it that you really want and where you can fit um, to build a solid and long lasting career network to build and leverage in-depth sector uh, knowledge. So it's interesting if you have one sector that you're interested in pursuing, it's nice um, to develop expertise on that sector because that can be a, a differentiator when you are interviewing. Uh, he also prepares uh, the students for uh, interviews and all the selection processes and um, uh, prepare you to sell yourself and your story. So all the training that you need to have to go into uh, a recruiting process and succeed, Carlos is going to be the guy uh, that is going to give you that um, toolkit. And on the business development side, um, there are a lot of um, events that um, the key account managers organize in order for the students to have um, uh, exposure and networking opportunities with companies. This is not completely um, updated, but I wanted to um, bring anyway so you can have an idea on the um, companies that come to recruit on campus and where, the, in terms of sector, our students are going afterwards. Finance is um, um, a big one uh, because the financial institutions usually have a more stru structured uh, uh, process for the. Um, uh, for master management um, uh, students um, and as you can see in the short list of companies recruiting on campus we have the big ones um, so in terms of career support the, uh, there, there will be a lot of opportunities but it's also on you right the the process and the ownership of this process should be the students um, for you to be able to succeed and uh, so today we actually have our uh, round three of the applications. It's a very standard application. You're going to need a GMAT or a GRE, uh, an English test if you're not a native speaker or if you, hadn't, um, if you haven't done your undergrad um, in an English speaking school. We, we ask for only one letter of recommendation, your official transcripts. Uh, some mandatory essays that are going to cover your academic um, performance uh, in the university and how that's tied to your personality or who you are, um, your career goals, and something personal that we want uh, you to share just for us to get to know you a little bit better. Then we decide who are the people that uh, are going to the interview. We are the ones in the admissions committee that interview everyone, so we don't delegate to other alumni. We are alumni and we interview ourselves. And then we go um, into the final committee and make the, um, uh, the final decision. The scholarship process, you can apply for scholarships. Scholarships can go up to 50% of tuition. Um, for you to apply, it's the regular application process and you just have to write an extra essay saying, how do you expect to finance your master and why do you think you deserve a scholarship? Then we take that um, to a committee and then we decide. We can leave it pending and then on the next um, committees we will always revise or we can say yes, you have a, a, a scholarship or no. And then again, scholarships go up to 50% of tuition. And then just to finish before we move on to the Q&A, I just wanted to give you some uh, tips um, for your application. Um, we are a very supportive admissions team. So make sure you reach out to the one, uh, to the associate director that is responsible for your country. We have um, a, the um, list of uh, associate directors and regions. Uh, so you can find yourself if you are in, in the US. Uh, Deborah McCandless is going to be your person and she's based in New York. If you're in Latin America, it's going to be Michel Hassi. Depending on which part in Asia you are, I have four people in the Asia team that is based in um, Tokyo, Singapore, Hong Kong, and Shanghai. Uh, so reach, reach out, engage, be close to the school. For us, it's very, very important to get to know you on a personal level, right? Not to be intrusive or invasive or anything, but we are trying to admit real people, right? Human beings, not only CVs or transcripts, right? So we want 
uh, to get to know you so we are sure that we are making the right decision um, in the admissions committee. Um, current students and alumni will be of great help for you to understand better the ESE experience. They've been in your place. They've uh, passed through the process of uh, all the decisions and the doubts that you're now, and they will be the best source um, for you to really understand if the ESA experience is for you or not, okay? And so the GMAT and the GRE are important, but we do look at the candidate's uh, profile holistically. So even if you don't have an amazing GMAT or GRE score, it can be compensated for good academic performance or good internship experience, or if you're involved in extracurricular activities and also a fit with the school, right? If we feel that you're a perfect fit for the school, we might um, be willing to overlook a bit um, a not so good uh, GMAT or GRE, okay? Be on top of the application deadlines. Um, you will increase your chances of getting a scholarship if you apply early. So just for you to know, the masters, they have a different um, cycle and masters uh, candidates, they usually apply. Now we're gonna start the, um, the busy uh, moment. So if you haven't applied yet, don't worry because the peak of the applications is about to come. So we're still early. Check our blog um, for content and insights. And my sixth uh, and cheesiest tip, but is the one that I like the most, uh, really be yourself, right? Uh, we are, this is a process and it's a two-way process. We are trying to get to know you and you should be trying to get to know us as well to see if there is a match, right? So don't try to assume what we would like to think um, or hear. Um, just be genuine so we can make sure that we are taking the best uh, decision. And then before the Q&A, um, I just wanted to invite you to a, a very complete event that we're going to have on February 18, uh, that is our open day. We're going to have uh, the program presentation, so it's going to be a bit similar to what you've just heard. Uh, so then if you want to just join for the case class, it's going to be, uh, we're going to send you the case before so you can read and prepare. And it's going to be a marketing case and it's very interesting. It's, uh, the professor is amazing. Um, and it's for you to experience the case class um, as uh, ESA delivers, right? So have a little bit of a ESA uh, flavor um, before deciding to apply perhaps. And then we finish with a student and alumni panel. So this is our contacts. Um, so... Write it down um, uh, because I'm going to stop sharing my screen so we can move on to the Q&A and I know I'm a bit uh, uh, late. <laughs> um, so I'm happy to take any questions. Um, Beautiful. Thank you so much, Paula. And and yeah, you. I mean, you ran a little bit over, but I'll say the uh, the presentation. You ran through so many of the questions. Um, I can tell that you've done this before because uh, half the questions I was going to ask you answered perfectly in the uh, in the presentation itself. I definitely suggest anybody watching uh, go back and rewatch that applications tip slide specifically. Um, I thought you gave fantastic information there. Um, just about some of the, the questions people have. Uh, so definitely go back, rewatch part of the, uh, those presentations, but definitely the application tips as well. Um, and then I also want to thank Kelly in the background for answering a ton of questions over in the chat as well. So if you're rewatching this, go look at her answers as well. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, let's, uh, let's run through some questions. Um, I know you actually answered this during your presentation and you answered it pretty well, uh, but I do want to throw it up again. Um, are classes remote right now? Um, I know I know you said that you've, you've fared better than most, uh, but can you give us a little insight about what that looks like in the future as well? Nice, okay, good. Um, so in that slide that I showed, the, um, uh, the protocols that we have, it's, it's a very strict protocol for you to be able to come to campus, but we are very happy and satisfied because with that protocol, we were able to keep the doors open since our students um, came back from summer. Mm. So the, um, um, the class in Madrid started in September for the master management and already started on campus. And apart from a blizzard and a snowstorm that we had in Madrid a couple of weeks ago uh, that shut the, the campus for two days, <laughs> 
we never close the campus again, right? So the classes are in person uh, in all our campuses um, in Madrid and in Barcelona. And we've actually been one of the very, very few business schools uh, in the world to be able to keep that going, right? And I feel that it's mm -hmm. a lot because of the very strict protocol that we have and the commitment that we have with the learning experience, especially, especially on a case method environment, right? Where it's much better to have the person debates and discussions than online, right? Uh, we have the hybrid top uh, possibility, but it's always better to be on campus. Yes, that's no, that's fantastic. And it's, it's great to see. I know a lot of people are uh, hoping that is the case when they get to the school that they can actually be there in person. So that's great to hear. Um, and on that topic, can you maybe describe some of the, the big student events at ESC and, but also how that looks maybe going forward this year and maybe how you're adapting some of these student events? Okay. Um, so the big, the big event, um, that we had, for example, the career forum, that is um, like basically a career fair where the companies come, present to students, and then there's a networking opportunity. This is happening uh, online, okay? So we're gonna have one uh, next week. And I was actually talking to the career director today because we had a meeting together and it's looking great right and i think that it's even easier to organize like, and then there's even more potential because more companies can join more ESA alumni that uh, work on these companies can join um, the, the events and talk to students and i feel that this can be very advantageous for for the students because it's a stronger bond that you create with the company right um, and in the mastery management, um, I think that the, the career events uh, and the other big events that happen also is the um, uh, special series uh, with the global leaders. This is also happening online. So everything that is not academically or academic is happening online. Um, and it's, it's been working out. Yeah? So <laughs> I think yeah, the but... experience has been positive. That's great. Yeah, it's, it's great to see that uh, a lot of campuses are able to kind of make that virtual move, although it's very different than what we're used to. It, it's good to see that there has been some uh, very positive feedback that I've heard, um, just that the schools are managing well and still being that inclusive environment. Um, it looks like I, uh, actually Kelly sent me a question that I think she would like you to answer live as well. And it's something that I've seen um, asked a lot about multiple programs, and that would be uh, this person looks like they are applying, they want to be applying during their final year of undergraduate and they only have internship experience so far. Um, does having no work experience affect the application, even if they have leadership experience in college as well? So it doesn't affect at all, at all. Like the, um, um, especially because it's, it's actually who we are looking for. We are looking for people with no experience. Uh, the maximum work experience in the master management is two years. Uh, so the most people will have none. Um, having the internship experiences, I think it's good for career um, purposes, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you look at a CV, and you have someone that doesn't have any uh, internship experience and you have another one that does, even if both of them are doing a mass management at ESA, the one that has the internship experience will be, can be, can add more value, at least um, from a first, um, uh, a first reading, right? Um, mm -hmm. But from ours, um, no, we take it very holistically. We understand, um, some people, depending on the course that you do, they can't even do the internships and we take that into consideration as well. So this is why we are um, one of the essays. You can address that, right? The first essay talks about how do you think, I don't remember exactly, but how do you think that um, your academic performance represents who you are, something like this. And then this is something that maybe you can bring um, and uh, explain what were your engagement during university, what you were doing, if you were working or not. Um, so this is something that uh, a space that can be used for that too. Great, great. Thank you so much for that. Um, and then kind of, I know you spoke a little bit about career, so I'd like to kind of use that as a bridge to the next question. 
Um, and, and that's that's over the um, the job the job market, if you will. But someone uh, who wants uh, who would want to shift to other non-European countries after a year or two working post MIM, uh, will we land jobs in other countries? I want to also kind of use this to maybe ask a broader question um, of what does that job mobility look like after the program? Have you seen people move around a lot? Do they tend to centralize in one area? What have what have you kind of seen? Okay. This is a good question that I, for now, don't have a great answer, <laughs> just because we only had one graduating class, right? So, and the class was fairly small. It was our first one, so it was 47 students. So anything that we say in terms of percentage, and I showed, can be a bit deceiving, <laughs> right? Because if four people went, then it's 10% of the class. <laughs> uh, um, but I think it's interesting to put things into perspective. Um, the mastery management, in general, is a very European concept, right? Um, which means that most of our candidates and students are going to be are going to come from Europe. So we already know that this is um, this is going to be a much more European program than what we see MBAs, right? Um, so it's quite the opposite if, if if we compare the MBA and the mastery management. So there will be a lot of Europeans and there will be a lot of um, uh, companies recruiting in Europe. But I passed very quickly, uh, but we do have in the, the Career Development Center people that are responsible for different regions, right? So if you come, if you don't come from Europe or if you come from Europe, but you want to work elsewhere, there we do have support in Latin America, in uh, North America, in Asia and Middle East and Africa. Right. Um, I think that it's interesting if you try to go where the network is strong. And I think that uh, the MBA can be a good proxy for that because we know where the MBAs are and we've been uh, like a longer and older program. Um, but uh, I think that if you are planning to go, that's the advantage to go away from Europe. That's one of the advantages of YESI, right? We do have a very extensive um, alumni network that you can reach out and you have the institutional support of people that are based in other uh, other regions developing mm -hmm. contacts with uh, companies in these regions right um, so yes I, I think that um, if you want a year or two uh, um, after the MIM you want to relocate to somewhere else you will have a good uh, network to lean on Fantastic. No, great, great answer. And uh, it does look like we are coming up on time. So I do want to give you uh, kind of the final chance. Uh, do you have any final thoughts for the candidates uh, as they're either uh, thinking about a, like, getting those last minute applications done or maybe in the future, any last minute thoughts? Yes, I just wanted to reinforce the message of um, doing a good research, right? This is, this is an important decision. I've been in the place of having to decide on my master as well. And it changed my life completely, right? It's the, it's not only the classes that you're going to have, it's the people that you're going to meet, it's the values and the culture that you're going to live uh, during uh, your program and after, because we eventually graduate and we are alumni of that school forever. Um, so it's very important to take your time. Um, I know that in the master's um, industry, there's a lot. Uh, it's not only one type of master that you're looking at. It's a master in management against a master in finance, against a master in marketing, data analytics. So it can be quite um, overwhelming in terms of options. So reach out to people that have done the masters that you're considering, right? Mm -hmm. uh, if you are between a master in management and a master in finance, talk to people that have done both because they probably considered both uh, and they decided, they, they decided for each, um, for one specifically, right? Um, so I think that um, doing, uh, doing this research, uh, investing time on that, I think it's something that uh, applicants should be doing more than they do. <laughs> no. I even say we do because I was not a, a, an amazing applicant to be honest. <laughs> No, I mean, those are all great points. And uh, if you're watching this, if you're rewatching this, feel free to go back. 
Um, Paula did post a slide to where you can actually schedule one-on-ones, which I thought has been amazing. Not a lot of schools provide that service. Uh, so I think that's very unique and something that you should definitely take advantage of as well as reaching out to alumni and honestly, everybody you can. This is a big decision, so don't do it in a, in a vacuum. Um, but I do want to thank you for that amazing presentation. And thank you again for Kelly in the background uh, answering all those questions. You've been, uh, you've been amazing at getting all of those answered. So uh, yeah, I do want to thank everyone. Uh, thank you, Paula. And we, were, we will go ahead and close it out. So everyone have a, a great rest of your day. Okay. Thanks, Brendan. And thanks, guys. Good luck in the process.